All right, welcome back to exam project tutorial three. This is definitely going to be one of the harder things you'll do, but that's great because it's going to be a lot of fun. We are going to hack together a database to use for any web application, application but specifically your exam project using Google Drive. So the first thing you want to do is go to Google Drive and create a new form, which will bring you here. And you're going to create a number of fields equal to the number of data points you need to collect. So that's going to be at least one for each question, and then maybe one for, you know, first name, last name. If you're collecting, like, time it takes for each question, you'll need that, too. Uh, I only have five here just for demonstration purposes, but I should have more. Next, each question is going to simply be a simple text field. And you don't actually need anything in the title, although I might suggest that you include a descriptive title so that it makes reading the data easier later. But that's up to you. And I have not done it, again, for demonstration purposes. All right, I'm going to pause. You guys fi finish that up. All right, by this time, you should have your completed form. So we're ready to, sit. We're ready to do the next step, which is make sure all of these are unchecked, as well as all of these. And we're going to go to View Live Form. Leave that open. We don't need it yet. We're also going to go to View Responses. All right. So in your data table, you should have something that looks like this, which well, actually you should have. Why does mine say number six? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Uh-oh, Google. Let me try deleting it and redoing it. Number five. Not good. All right, well, I don't think it should matter. Oh, there's number five. I don't have any clue what number six is, but whatever, it shouldn't matter. OK, so here's your spreadsheet with the responses. There's no responses yet. The next step is important to follow. We need to go File, Publish to the Web, and you're going to publish the entire document. And then we're going to go to Share, go to Advanced, and change it, the access to Public on the Web as well. All right, that's pretty straightforward. The last thing we need is we need to go back to our form and copy this URL here minus the edit. So we're going to copy this URL here minus the edit. And that's going to go into our code. So I've set up a basic submit form function, which you can do too. You can ignore this commented stuff for now. We're going to set up a variable for that URL, and I'm going to paste. All right, that's good. We'll need this. Last thing is at the very end of that URL, we just need to type form response, just like that. All right, that was pretty easy. Okay, so in our code at this point, we have the ability to check if answers are correct as well as save selected answers. So what I'm going to do with this tutorial is I'm going to write uh, some code just to send the selected answers to the spreadsheet. You c you'll have to figure out how to send the specific data that you want to collect to the spreadsheet. That's going to be up to you, but this is probably the hardest thing you'll have to do because the rest of it will, might just be you know one variable. All right. So we need to make what's called an AJAX call, which you do as follows. And what do we put in this AJAX call? Well, the first thing we put is the URL, which we have right above. The next thing we put is data, which I'm going to type data, colon, open curly brace, close curly brace. We'll leave that there for a second. We need to include the type parameter, colon, quotes, post in caps. And then last, you're going to include the data type parameter as such, XML. 
And then finally, the success, which we actually don't even need for this, but it's important to have an any Ajax query. And that's it. Okay, so you'll need to have that. Now in this data piece here, this is where we send the form data to the spreadsheet. So we need to figure out the way to format it. And it's actually uh, kind of tricky. So here's how it's going to work. Um, go back to your live form, not the edit one, but the live one. And what you need to do in order from top to bottom is the following. Right click on the text field, inspect element. And you'll notice each input has a type text and then a name. This is what you need for your code. You need to copy this value. It should be entry dot and then a number. Each number will be different. And in data, you're going to say quotes, paste that value, colon, and then in here is the value of each answer choice. So if this is answer number one, that's like selected answers at zero. And then you do the next one by going comma, quotes. Let's go down to the next text field, which is in here. There it is. We're going to take the name of it. There are two of these. There's like one with an underscore and one with a period. Make sure you get the one with a period. And we're going to paste, colon, selected answers, number two. And we're going to keep doing this until we finish, until we get to the end. Yay. OK. So I'm going to pause the video as I finish this up. And you guys can do the same thing data piece all ready to go with all of the answers. Now, if you're saying, hey, couldn't you do this in an array and loop through these? Yeah, you could, but I did it the long way just to show you, so that's fine. Um, all right, so that's good. We got selected answers. We're all set. We're all set. Now what? Okay, so we're going to save. The first thing we want to do is we want to make sure we're actually calling this submit function. Remember last time we said end the test here if question counter is greater than the array of questions? So that's where we'll call our submit form function. That's good. And uh, well, it looks like now we have to do a few more things. So what I've done is I've gone to Google Drive and hosted my project. You guys know how to do this because we did it during the last project, so make sure you host host your project here. Okay, go ahead and do that now. I'm going to pause, or you should pause the video. And I'm going to go to the URL of this site, which is googledrive.com slash host slash that. Cool. All right, the last thing that we need to do, very important, is we need to get the domain of where this is hosted. So for each one of you, you need to copy this, your weirdcode.googledrive.com. That needs to get copied, and that goes in your URL base instead of greenwichschools.org or greenwich.k12.ct.us. You're going to replace that with this. Very important. I'm going to re-upload the JavaScript. Here it goes. And let's check it out. So if everything goes according to plan, we should be able to take this test. And then when we hit the submit button for the last time, remember, we haven't actually coded anything else aside from sending this data yet. So obviously, we have to do the score report too, which we'll do in the next video. But theoretically, if you hit the submit button, it should send the data 
to the spreadsheet. Let's see if it happens. Look at that. It works. Sort of. I don't know why my data is all messed up. Well, I doubt that's going to happen on yours. It's just a mystery as <laughs> to why it's happening on mine. It looks like I might have messed one of these up. There's two number fives, which is definitely screwing it up. But anyway, you can see some of the data goes in, and I don't think you'll have the same problem on yours, so it's totally fine. Um, I will make sure mine works before doing the next video, but this is definitely how you do it. Um, so there you go. And every time somebody else takes this test, you'll get another data point. All right, so that's your next task. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll work on reading this data out of the database and doing some visualization with it on your site. Happy coding!